Yeah, the, the artwork that you on your pedals is is fantastic. It is beautiful, uh, and and as we, we mentioned before, you know, um, it's all about. I think we're all after that pedal whereby it's on the board and somebody comes over and points to that pedal and goes, what's that? Just purely by the artwork. And uh, so where do you get the inspiration? Who does your artwork? And uh, if you tell us a bit about that, please. So I do most of the artwork myself. There's one pedal coming out soon, the Ocean Man, at Moon Toboggan on Instagram is doing the uh, artwork for that one. And it looks phenomenal i can't wait for that one to come out but most of the stuff i do i get my influence uh from my imagination from reading hp lovecraft and that's where all the tentacles and time space stuff comes from um at least a lot of it and i've always been really into bright colors glow in the dark uh black light stuff and so i want that all to be on the pedal also and it's really difficult. I can't find anywhere that I can get UV printed stuff, like UV reactive paints and stuff. So that's why I ended up doing a lot of hand painting. Well, this year I wanted everything to be very, you know, colorful still, but I wanted to get it printed. So I decided to go without the glow in the dark, without the UV, just so that I could get some really nicely printed cases out there to everybody with the new petals in them. And that's kind of where I'm going this year. But going back to the colors, I love the old movies like the heavy metal movies, The Wall, King Floyd, Ralph Bashiki's uh, Wizards. Like yeah. just all those really colorful psychedelic movies thing. I always loved that stuff just because it's like music and imagination meld and you can like see the colors but with your ears. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You know, like, when you listen to the old psychedelic stuff, the doors, you listen to, you know, purple harem, whiter shade of pale. When you hear certain sounds, it's almost like you can see the colors with your ears. And yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's like a more of an experience. It's almost like you're seeing the music through color. And so a mixture of the psychedelic colors in in the pedals i just i feel like when you hear those modulation sounds and stuff it just really it brings the whole thing into a perfect art package yeah well one pedal that really caught my eye was the super fun awesome pedal experience pedal the wrong rectangular the long the long one with the yeah. bubble animals and ice cream <laughs> that's it yeah so creative so unique i mean it was you know it's that's yeah it's that sort of thing where i'd just love to have that kind of thing on my board because it's it again it's a talking point isn't it uh but yeah if you could maybe tell us a bit about that that pedal yeah so that pedal it started out by like i love you know distortion fuzz i love delay delay is just one of my favorite things and so I figured why not put them together in a pedal because there are two things I'm always going to use on my board. So basically it started off as just the idea because I wanted to use my kids' artwork and stuff like from her coloring book. And I loved the unicorn, the puppy animals, and the ice cream, the stars and stuff. And I was like, hmm, what would be really good for this? And I've always had trouble with like the Fuzz Factory. It has a couple of really good tones in it, but they're sometimes difficult to dial in because it goes so crazy so quickly. So I wanted to take that and make it a little more usable on more points. So I modified the Fuzz Factory circuit enough where it didn't go crazy all the time, but it could still go crazy. And on the original, it was germanium and silicone, and you could choose, um, there's three transistors in it, you could choose on each one, so you could mix and match however you wanted it to sound. Hmm. And then I modified other parts of the circuit to make it, you know, 
more dialable than just crazy all the time. And then I was like, well, I need a simple delay to go in here. Something that's just, you know, simple, but it'll work. And so I added that in there and I was like, well, I want it to be in one of those long things so it can fit on that bottom row of your pedal board and you have everything right there. What? And that's really where that one came from. And then somebody approached me, uh, Lowell from Pedal Boards of Doom, approached me and was like, hey, can you build me one of those? And I was like, I can't. I don't have any more of those vintage transistors, but I could build you one that was just the silicone part. And so he had me do that. And we added the time knob on the side so that he can use it as an expression pedal for the time yeah. on the delay. And we added a mega switch, which when you hold it down, it just oscillates the delay so you can change it all there. Wow. It, it's, 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 it, it, it looks and sounds incredible. And you've, um, you also create some fantastic time-based pedals. And you mentioned you delay pedal as well. Yeah. Um, and one of them is uh, Color of Time. Is that right? Color of Time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was listening to that. I was watching a, ved, a video of that with the tentacle press. <laughs> and the two together, it was phenomenal, the, the sounds you were getting out of that. Yeah, so the, ten the tentacle press, I got the idea from the Ranger Igor. Because I have a Ranger pedal, um, and the Igor is a pressure-sensitive little pad. And it, it works. I mean, it works with his pedals great. But I wanted something that was basically the, the small form expression pedal. Mm. And so I was like, well, maybe I can make something like the Igor. So I took my Igor apart and I looked in it and I was like, well, this isn't that hard, but it's not going to do what I wanted it to because it, it's really, I found the Igor to be like on or off mm. more than actual like pressure sensitive. Yeah. And so I was like, well, maybe I can figure out how to make a pressure pad and use that as the, and figure out how to get the right resistance and mm. use that. Well, about six months later, I finally had an idea to, you know, after doing a bunch of research on how to do it. And so I started modifying the little three-pole double throw switches that I'd broken when I first started playing. I just kept them. <clears throat> and so basically after a bunch of figuring out how to manufacture those into little pressure pads i put them into tiny little cases and it's a expression pedal but it's yeah. pressure yeah. and then the color of time was basically all the ideas that i ever had for a delay that i wanted in a delay when I first started building pedals. Uh, and, and, and what What's are that? those? What are they? What are those things? What are you so, looking for in a delay pedal? So I wanted something that I could just tune the uh, tune the repeats to either you know low pass or high pass filter to get them to sound more like a tape delay, uh, analog delay, or however that just something really simple, nothing I had to like program. I've got plenty of the TC pedals and other pedals that do you know digital replications of the mm. you know, stuff but I wanted something really simple that I could just tweak mm. and so that was the very first thing the color um, uh, setting on that pedal it's just something really simple as a nice delay that you can go either ice picky or down to the muddy repeat and I love that but then I also wanted something where I could get an electric mistress type sound like with the the flanging and the chorus yeah and so i programmed that into the delay loop but then i wanted to also use it without the delay so if you turn the delay time all the way down on that you can just get that flanging chorus down mm. and then i was like well what about you know i've, I've got a third setting what do i want to do and i was like well I love the really psychedelic sounds, you know, with all the phasing and the tremolo and where it, the sounds are just back and forth. And so I put like all the things that I could think of that have optical pulsing uh, yeah. in their circuit. And I put that into the delay loop for the optic setting on that. And so if you turn 
the delay time all the way down and you turn the mix up, you can get just the all the different pulsing effects with the optic mode. Wow. Excellent. Well, it, yeah, the, the clips I've see, seen and heard of it, it sounds it, it sounds great, I must say. You know, I was listening to it yesterday and it sounds fantastic. Wow. You know, and that's what's so terrible playing. Sorry? I said, and that's what's my terrible playing. <laughs> Do you know, what? I think we all we're all a bit self conscious about our playing, aren't we? And uh, I don't know, somebody was saying about that they said that after so many years, like twenty years of playing guitar, they they really should have been better than what they are. And and I think, well, actually, if it's all about expectations, isn't it? Because if we get to where we think we should be, we still wouldn't be satisfied. We'd still be wanting, you know, to you know, play the next riff or whatever, faster or with more phrasing or whatever it may be, you know. So. I mean, we all strive for a certain amount. And for me, it's, I was always actually a vocalist more than a, a player. And it, it just so happens that I, like, nobody would play guitar in the band that I wanted to be in. So I just started playing. And that's where it all started. And... For me, it's like I want to be better at guitar, but I've never had a guitar lesson. And mm. I should go get guitar lessons because I'm sure I'd get to where I want to be if I took them, but I never did. Mm. I had lessons for a few years and it, it helped, but I think there's a, you do, you have to go out and learn things you, at some point. But I, I do wish I'd had a bit more formal you know sort of education the theory and things like that i wish i'd I'd have done that really but uh it's never too late i suppose there you are it's never too late that's very true so i can't imagine there's anybody in the industry that's not heard of shock rock but if there is somebody out there that this is the first time that they've heard about uh, your pedals and your creations what what would how would you describe what you create and your pedals to them well, first, let me say, I, I mean, I'm sh I'd am i be shocked to hear that many people have heard of me. And it's always surprising when somebody's like, oh, yeah, because I just I didn't know I was that well known in the industry. But it seems like people do know who I am. So thank you, everybody, for helping with that, for one. Um, but as far as for me, I mean, I try to build small batch stuff so it's a little more exclusive i try to keep for a small builder who does you know very small amounts of pedals i try to keep the prices reasonable and i want my stuff to be very out there but that you can rein in so you can use it for a whole set yeah not just you know there's some pedals i even own them some pedals where you turn it on you use the one sound for five seconds you turn it off and that's it for the whole show i want somebody that can do that you can use it for that five seconds but then you can twist it or flip something or turn a knob and it goes to that normal sound that you want for a whole album too yeah. so i want there to be just that weirdness that everybody wants that something that you just can't place but at the same time i want there to be something normal that you can use for a whole show very usable sound. 